Welcome back to the How to Build a Coffee Table series. This will be the final episode. We're finally there. And today we're going to put the finish on this and fit the drawers. If that sounds good, stick around. After. I'm Andy Guile and our mission here is to inspire, educate and support you in your journey to becoming a better woodworker. We do that through a whole series of how-to videos, project builds where we take something from scratch and take you all the way through step by step. We do tool tips, we do tool reviews, we do chats, we just general information from the industry. So if that sounds good to you and you want to get involved, consider subscribing, leave me a thumbs up and leave a comment. The channel is supported by a website, www.thewoodcrafter.com and if you've not checked it out, go over there now and grab yourself a free membership. On there you'll find even more information, more project builds and those all important plans to accompany the projects on the channel. With that said, let's crack on with the final episode in the How to Build a Coffee Table series. Last time we were assembling the drawers and as you can see the drawers are now complete. I've sanded these down to the typical 180 grit and you can really start to see how beautiful these are now beginning to look. Now sanding them down is no harder than going through the 80, 120, 180 grit. The tops here and the edges I sanded down by hand, not the machine, and that was to avoid rounding this over. And all the addresses on there have been broken again by hand. Simple piece of sandpaper round a block of wood. And they are good to go. Today I want to turn our attention to the finish. I'm using a two part finish on this project. I'm first of all giving it a light tint with Osmo light grey tint. And then I'm coming in with two coats of Osmo clear satin. And that just gives me the finish that I'm looking for. Now I've already put the tint on the table here and hopefully you can see that the grain is picked out really well and is showing up nicely across here. You can see that slight grain tint. So that's what the grey tint does for us. It does not turn our wood grey, it just soaks into the pores of the wood and really highlights the overall grain. So I've already put the tint on the carcass, I've already put the tint on the underside of the top and today I'm going to show you how I apply the tint, then how I apply the top coats and then you can see the final product. Now it doesn't really matter if I'm applying the tint or the final coat, the approach I use is exactly the same. I use these white 3M sponges and if you're wondering where I get hold of these, there's a link to these on my affiliate site over on the website. So go and check it out, that will make it easy for you. And I just cut these into usable squares. Now you can see that this one has already been well used for the grey tint and I'm going to use it again for this job. Now the quality of your finish is directly related to the quality of your preparation. And we've already gone ahead in a previous episode and we've flattened this down. Now what I have done at this stage, I've just gone through and have taken out any bits of dirt that I don't like the look of. And that's as simple as coming through with some of the 180 grit sandpaper, wrap round and off cut of oak, and then just lightly rubbing anything on that top, like that mark there, that I'm not happy with. And I just have to go over the entire top like this by hand. Not that it needs it, it just helps me to see the top a bit clearer. When you're using the power tool, you tend to gloss over small problem areas. When you're doing this by hand, you tend to focus much more on the top, and I find that just gives me that need to finish. And once I've been across all of that, I know I am happy and I know that top is good to go. Now the next thing you want to do is to remove all the sawdust that you've just made. I find a hoover with a brush on it perfect for this job. And with that done, I'm now ready to put the tint on. As always, make sure everything's mixed up nicely. The Osmo Tint or the Osmo Clear Finish are both basically the same formula. It's got wax inside here and it's also got an oil based inside here. The difference is, of course, this has also got a tint inside it. So you want to make sure that all those particles of wax and oil and tint are all mixed up very, very well and evenly distributed throughout the can. Now, as always, when you're working with any chemicals, take some precautions and I tend to use these surgical gloves whenever I'm doing a finish. Now, the Osmo range is quite kind to the environment and there's no solvents or toxics in inside this but I always take that extra precaution what you do of course is up to you but I would advise that also work in a well ventilated area I've actually got an air unit with a charcoal filter inside that just cleans the air when I'm using this stuff 
And finally, I do wear safety glasses when I'm doing this procedure, just to stop any splashes getting to my eyes. I quite like my eyes. Now, when you first open this, you're going to be quite surprised because it really does look grey. It almost looks like a paint product. But trust me, it's a tint. It's not a dye or it's not a paint. It's a tint and it won't take the wood grey. It'll just soak into the pores of the wood and just give that little bit of highlight to the grey that looks quite pleasant. So the things I tend to have to hand is a rag. This is actually an old t-shirt which makes a great material because there's no lint. It's a lint-free material and I tend to have a lot of old t-shirts knocking about so I save them for this job. I've obviously got the tint itself and I've obviously got the grey sponge. And it's simply a matter of applying this to your surface. And the easiest way to do that is to sort of pour it on. So just pour on the tint and then in circles work this into the grain of the wood. And this is why I really like these white sponges because these, unlike the green sponges that you'll see in kitchens, they're not abrasive so they will not abrade your surface. Make sure that all this is worked well into the grain. Go ahead in these circles. Don't worry at this moment about anything pooling on you or collecting on your surface. Just keep working it in and working it in and working it in. It goes quite a long way, so you can just keep wiping that down that we poured onto the surface and that will take you into the next part. Now you can see already that it's not sending the wood grey, you can just see where it's beginning to pick up the grain in the material and just beginning to make that pattern come to the fore. Now you can also see that the oil is now beginning to penetrate into the wood as well and it's starting to give us that nice honey colour that you associate with oiled oak and it really is no harder than rubbing this in. Final bit here. Okay, now once you've got that rubbed in to the surface, I'm just going to allow that to sit for five minutes or so, just let it start to soak in. And then I'm going to come back and I'm just going to drag this down through the grain to give me that even pattern. We can already see that's looking quite nice. And while that's soaking in, I'm just going to do the front of the drawer unit. Now I've got quite a lot in this sponge now, so it's just a matter of rubbing this over. I don't need to pour this on. Now when I'm doing the front of these, I don't really want to go through and do the inside of these. It's just this visible piece of oak that I'm looking for here. Making sure I'm getting that top visible edge as well, just on the oak though. Not picking up the popular. And again, this is all about rubbing the tint into the pores of the oak and the grain of the oak. Nothing more than that.
Now with that done, I've now finished with the tin. Now that's used about three quarters of a 125 millimeter can. So it does go quite a long way, and that was both sides of the top, the front of the drawers, and the frame that I've just put down here out of the way for the time being. Now that means that this has been soaking for five minutes, and you can probably just start to see here and here, a little bit down here where that's pooling. What I now want to do is to even the surface out. So I come back in with the same white sponge I've been using, even though it's grey, and I'm using the other end of it now, the stuff I've not used to apply. Single pulls all the way down the table, going with the grain, and all I'm looking to do at this stage now is just to even out that top surface, like so. Now what will continue to happen is this will continue to soak into the wood and continue to be sucked up by that grain of the wood. Now this is where you decide how much of a contrast you actually want. If you were to leave this overnight now for 24 hours, this is going to really give you quite a good grey contrast. I don't want that. I don't want that amount of contrast on this finish. So I'm going to leave this to soak in for 20 minutes and then I'm going to polish it off. And then I'm going to leave that to dry for 24 hours to harden before we get to the next step on our journey. Now I'm just going to look down the wood and I'm just getting the light to shine on that top and what I'm looking for is any obvious pooling of that material. I'm also looking for any obvious overlaps or anything that I've missed. And just there and there, there and there, it's just soaking in a bit faster than anywhere else and there. Good. I now leave that for 20 minutes and then we're going to polish that off and that will stop the grey get any darker. Now that's rested for just over 20 minutes so we're now ready for the next step and 20 minutes is a great time to go and have a cup of tea and what better way to enjoy a cup of tea than a branded Woodcrafter mug available now strange enough over on the website. Let's look at the next step. Now what I'm looking at is the overall surface and the surface has now started to take on a matte sheen all the way through with the odd exception of a glossy sheen where it's still wet and it's not soaked in. And it's those variances from that matte soaked in finish to that pooling on top where I'm still glossy that I'm now looking to fix. Once again I come in with a sponge. This sponge hasn't been used for applying any of the tint. It's the one I used on the table on the other side of the top for doing this very, very activity. So it's a bit grey, but this will now start to soak in the surplus tint that we don't want. And once again, it's no harder than just pulling down the sponge. And what I'm looking for is to take off any of those glossy pools. Now it's really simple, not hard to do. And take your time. Now if you don't do this, you'll have a slight imperfection where that glossy pool continues to soak in and everything else has stopped soaking in. So that will come out a slightly different colour for you and give you a slight blotch on the final surface. It is very, very minute. You probably never even notice it, but it's worth just taking your time just to go through this step. Now although the oil that's gone into the top will continue to be pulled down into the top and penetrate down and therefore the top will continue to develop while it dries in the next 24 hours it will do it consistently now having completed this step and that will look very nice for you on the following day just run around the edges make sure you've got no obvious drips on those edges then the final thing i want to do before i leave this to 24 hours just take my rag my t-shirt anything that's not got any lint inside it so it doesn't come off on the surface, I'm just going to buff this now, very, very lightly, hardly any pressure whatsoever. And this just gives you that final assurance that any pools of finish are evenly distributed throughout the layer. And also starts to give you quite a nice little sheen as well. But you're not taking anything off really at this point. Everything is now sucked in and soaked into your table. And we really are just making sure that the next layer is going to be perfect. Once you've done that, simple wipe up and down with the grain.
and you can see from from the rag very very little has been has been pulled off a little amount but very very little pulled off and that's a beautiful flat surface so that's it that's the tint done it's no harder than that and to be honest with you the next two coats are no harder than that either but we look at that when this is dried so i'll leave this for 24 hours and we'll come back and we'll look at the next step see you in a minute okay so we've now let that dry for 24 hours and as you can see it's looking pretty good we notice now that we're beginning to get a consistent colour across this. And remember, there were variances in the shading on this, but now it's beginning to flatten out. And you can also see that the grain pattern is now just lifted that little bit because of that grey tint that we put on. And that's exactly what we're looking for. So now it's time to put on the top coat. Using Osmo again, PolyX Oil, High Solid Clear Satin. And what's important here is that we mix this up. It does separate the tin, the oil tends to come to the top and the solids tend to go to the bottom. So a good, good mix and stir before we start. Any old scrap of wood will do. And you can actually see it just changing colour as you mix as the solids and the oil come together. And that's obviously pretty important otherwise the product won't do its job. Now because of space constraints I'm going to start on the drawers first of all. Remember I don't really need to treat the bottom because we've already given that a couple of coats of Osmo before we assemble the drawer but we do obviously want to do all the other surfaces. And the first job is just to denib this. Small amounts of dust in the air will have settled on the finish while it was drying. So just polish that over and all I'm using is the same non-abrasive white sponge that we use to apply the initial finish. Obviously it's a clean one, so just rub that over and once we get to that point we can then go ahead and apply our finish. So again I'm just using the white sponge I'm just running in circles again on the finish and then making sure I just finish with the grain. And again I wipe off the excess. I don't really want this to pool on the surface then rub into the sides, really working down into the joints and I love the way that starts to happen where the end grain really starts to darken and makes that beautiful contrast and then do the inside. Now that's all the drawers done and I've just put them down out of the way on small blocks to keep them off the floor. Allows the air to circulate, stops any bits from the floor sticking to the oil that we've just applied. So we'll come back to those in 20 minutes and we'll just give them a buff off. But let's look at the tabletop and you can see more of the technique. So the same again, I just denib this with a clean white sponge. Now this will have a few splatters of oil on it from the drawers we've just done, but that's okay. No dramas there at all. Now once you've got this nice and smooth and you're not looking to sand this, you just really are denibbing it. We can then apply the treatment. I can pour this time a little bit because it's a flatter surface so it should be okay. So just put some product down for yourself. Using the same sponge you just used the drawers, it's nice, now nicely impregnated with oil. The small circles, dipping that into the grain. Now once that's done across the entire surface, just going to leave it for five minutes or so just to allow that to settle and to suck in a little bit. And then once that's done that, I'm just going to come back and just go wipe with the grain. Same sponge, the one that's now already covered and impregnated with the product, but I just want to try and avoid any pooling on the overall top. Okay, that's about five minutes, so now just use your sponge and just pull down the length of the board with the grain. Now this is just smoothing out any pooling that may have happened. And once you've done that, use the other side of the sponge and repeat in the opposite direction. Now I just find that this really helps to flatten out the surface and really ensure that you've got complete coverage across the board. The worst thing that can happen is you end up with some oil standing in one location and there's therefore more of that soaking into the board and it starts to give you over time a little bit of variances as the board ages. Run around the edges to make sure there's no drips that you can't see. I 
And now I'm going to leave that to stand for 20 minutes and then we'll come back and we'll do the final preparation of that one before we let it dry overnight. Now all I'm doing now, I'm taking that same sponge, that clean sponge that we use to denib everything and I'm just wiping the surface with the grain in a single direction. All this does, it takes off any excess oil that's been pooling, just pushes anything else back into the grain and then that can sit there and set overnight, 24 hours or so. Now with the drawers done we use exactly the same technique on this. Come down, a little bit of pressure, wipe with the grain and all you're looking to do is to remove any of that excess oil that's just pooling on the surface. Now what I also like to do, I like to get down and really look at the surface and I, and I use the light and move around and the light will show you any areas that are still pooling that you may have missed and what I want to achieve at this level is just that very very nice glossy wet looking film across there with no pools and no gaps i.e. no dry areas and that's looking pretty fine to me and then I'll just leave that for an hour or so and I'll come back in in an hour and just recheck it to make sure there's nothing still pooling that's obvious that just needs a bit of attention and that's okay very very light white but not much just removing the excess oil and then I'll leave that to soak in overnight and for the wax oils to harden off and can you see what's happening now I'm beginning to get this beautiful consistent look across this tabletop and every coat of this I apply will start to give me this richer colour and will start to balance out the table and that will continue to mature over time as well it's looking really really nice now you can see that the tint has actually settled down a little bit I think what's happening there I put the tint on and I rubbed it into into the grain into the figure of the wood now that figure of the wood is obviously softer material more porous than the hard long runs of grain that we've got on top so the porous material really sucks in that tint now we left it on for 20 minutes and then wiped it off and I said if you allow that to sit overnight and really really soak in you get more of a contrast. As I put this top coat of oil on that's also beginning to suck into this and it balances out that contrast we have between the grey and the oak and now you can see that's really settling down and it's just given that slight lift to the grain, not harsh grey, not a huge contrast, it just pops that grain that little bit by using that tint. I find that's quite a nice way of just giving a little bit more visual interest and lifting that grain on these sort of tops. And I like this, this is looking really rather beautiful. So with that done, I just do the same process on the frame. Okay, so I've put the second coat on now and as you can see, I've dropped the top back on and hopefully you can start to see how nice this is looking. All the grain is popping really quite well, the top is a beautiful rich colour and again that grey is really standing out in the top and it's looking really good. So the next thing I want to do is to put the drawers in. Now that's not quite as easy as just banging these in and saying jobs are good. There's a couple of things I want to do in the fitting of the drawers. The first thing I want to do is to raise them up ever so slightly so I start to get this consistent gap around the drawers I'm looking for. And the second thing is I want to put a stop at the back so they don't slide into the frame too far. So we'll start off at looking at the height of the drawers. Now what I've done, I've just made some very, very basic what I call drawer hangers. Now there's a number of ways you can put the drawers in here. Obviously you could buy some sort of metal sliding rail like you see on kitchen drawers and bedroom drawers for example. You could actually route inside here a groove and then use that groove to mount onto a corresponding bar inside the drawer unit but what I'm going to do is to actually support it from the bottom. So I've just made these very very simple drawer hangers. All these are is a piece of off cut oak and I've just glued onto that a base piece. In terms of the thickness of this stock here that is slightly narrower than the thickness of this so it doesn't interfere. And these are just about 18 millimeter square dowels like this. So this one will slot on to the end here inside. And this one will just slot into the side here. And then the drawer just simply rests on top of these. I've also chamfered the end ever so slightly. And that's just so the drawer doesn't catch on it when the drawer is being inserted. And obviously I've created two sets of these. One for the left and one for the right. 
So now it's simply a matter of screwing these in and I've just drilled some through holes here and countersunk that for the screws. I may just simply screw onto either this side here or the end plate on this side here. Let's have a look at that. And I've just put that into place and I've lined up so the top surface here is slightly lower than this surface here, i.e. at this moment the drawer will not rest on that bracket. And similarly I put this one into this side and again I'm just making sure that the surface here is lower than that and also that the clamp is not going to interfere. I can then take the appropriate drawer, in our case A2, now I'm just going to use some shims to set the height of this gap. And what I've started to experiment with is guitar picks. And these come in, well, I'm not sure if it's standard sizes, but 0.3 millimeters, 0.6 millimeters, 0.71 uh, millimeter. So they're really, really quite good for this. So these are about 0.6 millimeter picks, or in our world, they are now 0.6 millimeter shims. And that allows me to set that gap around the drawers, as you can see, that gives me quite a nice consistent look around that drawer. Once I've got that, it's simply a matter now of tapping up those runners that we've just put in place so they rest on the drawer and support it. And once I've got those where I want them to be, I'm just going to put a little bit more clamping pressure on there to just hold that into place, like that. And then without the shims in, that should maintain that nice consistent gap around the outside and it's no harder than that so I can carefully remove the drawer now so now I can just simply screw in I've already made the holes in the countersinks in this side here and this side here so I just put one screw in this side and one screw in this side to hold that bracket into place I can then do the next drawer on this side turn the table around do the other drawer and that's jobs are good one. so let's put those screws in now in theory, the drawer should slide in nicely, give me that nice consistent gap all the way around. Perfect. You'll also notice I've just dropped on some very, very simple knobs here. Nothing hard about that, just found the centre, drilled a hole through it and bolted those on. I think they finish it off quite nicely, nice and simple. And there you go. All these waxing to make it nice and smooth, but you can see how that's going to work. So with that one done, I can now go ahead and do exactly the same with this next drawer. And there you go, we now get this nice consistent drawer line on here. So I turn the table around and I do the same on the other side and then we'll come back and we'll look at the stops for the drawers. Excellent. Now with all the drawers set up, the final thing to do is just put the stops in that stops the drawers going too far in to the unit. I've pulled out the MFT table so I can get on both sides of the job and all I've done, working at one end first of all, I've just lined up the drawer so it's flush with the front where I want it to to sit finally. Obviously my gaps are good now so it's just that final flushing up to the front edge that I'm looking for and that's going to be there. And I've done exactly the same on the drawer on the other side. Now what that gives me is a gap between the two drawers, the backs of the drawers. And it's that gap there that I'm talking about. So I'm just coming in with a scrap piece of oak and I'm just going to put that against that drawer. I'm not moving the drawers and with my knife just make a mark. So now I've got my mark, I'm just going to cut this off and I'm going to glue it on the rail between those two drawbacks there and because this isn't treated the glue will take very well and then that will just stop these drawers going any further back and retaining that nice flush edge that I want at the front of the drawer. Cool let's get this cut and that's it that's what I'm looking for that little piece there. So we'll try that for size let's bring the two drawers up and I just want to check for flushness here and here and there looks good to me. So I'm going to do the same on the joint on that side that you can't quite see on the camera. Now with that done and those blocks still in place, I'm very carefully removing the front drawer. And I don't want to disturb the back drawer which is still in there. But now I can put some glue on these blocks, line them up to that back drawer and just clamp these down into place 
to dry. And obviously as the drawer now comes in, the back will hit these blocks and just stop the drawer going too far in. So I've got a consistent gap around the outside and I know the front's going to be flush because those blocks there position it. And that's quite nice, very very simple solution, nice and discreet. Yeah, I like that, so I'll do the other one, perfect. So that's pretty much it, the table's more or less done now. Those stops just need to dry off for a couple of hours. I'm just going to wax those runners that we've just put in there, that draw frame work, with just some standard beeswax, and that will just reduce the friction on those drawers going in and out, may give us a nice slide. Let that dry for a couple of hours, we'll come back in and we'll look at the final product. I'll see you in a minute. And that's it, that's the end of the series. We've built a coffee table. 15 episodes later, it's finally done. And I'm really, really pleased with the way that this has come out. Beautiful design. Love the way that finish is worked out with that nice grey coming through, lifting the grain. Everything's nice and square, everything's beautiful and neat. Feels beautiful when you run your hands over it. So I'll see you next time on The Woodcrafter. And see you soon.